Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. Welcome back YouTube and today we're going to be learning about magnetic declination. It's sometimes referred to as magnetic deviation or magnetic variation. Different terms, they all mean the same. So we're going to get out our map and our compass. I'm going to put you under the overhead camera view and we're going to lay this out. I'm going to show you what magnetic declination is, how to count for it, how to use it in your map and compass and your navigation, why you need to know it, and hopefully by the time we get done, you'll be, have a better understanding of declination slash deviation slash variation. So let's go to the overhead camera and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a theoretical trip. We're going to travel to this campsite and spend the night. We're going to get up, cross the river, come up to this rise because we've been told it's a wonderful view. And then we're going to travel straight across the landscape to this campsite. Now we know we're going to have to cross Bear Creek and Wolf Creek is going to be our backstop. And I've got a video about backstops. I'll put a link to the description of that below. So let's say we uh, are planning on this trip and we need to know to get from here to here. So we assume if you don't know about magnetic declination that you line your compass up with those north-south lines and then turn it until it faces north on the compass. Now we're going to take a bearing between that hill and our campsite and we're going to turn the bezel of our compass until it lines up with the needle. And This is a very common technique too. I've got a link, I'll put a link to the description of how to do this as well. So now as we travel through the, through the countryside, we can stop, take a bearing, say we got to go this way, travel a little bit further, stop, take a bearing, say we've got to go this way, stop, take a bearing, say we got to go this way, okay? And we keep doing that until we reach Wolf Creek. But the problem is, is we're not at the campsite. Okay, no big deal. We've using, we use this as one of our lines of triangulation, we know we're on this creek because we've crossed Bear Creek. We're going to take a bearing off of this peak over here to find out where on the creek we are. So we're going to bring our compass back to zero. And then we're going to take a bearing on that peak over there. And let's say it's 100 degrees. So now we're going to take our compass and we're going to place one edge of the compass on here and then we're going to turn until our compass reads 100 degrees. And right there it is. That means we are right here on the creek. We are uphill and we are going to need to go downhill. But we are incorrect and here's why. We didn't take this into account. So we are not here. So to explain why this is incorrect, well, let me make a phone call. Scotty, to the beam aboard directly to the bridge. So let's imagine that we are in orbit over the Earth. And when you put the latitude and longitude on the Earth, this is what it looks like. And let's get it off the, ma the main screen and, and bring it up to full, full view here. Okay, so when you look at this, all the north-south lines terminate at the North Pole. But this is not the direction your compass is pointing towards. It is actually pointed towards this point right here north of Canada, which is the North Magnetic Pole. Now when you look at the Earth from this angle and you see these lines, and I've highlighted one here, highlighted some here, these are the same lines that you see on the map, and I've highlighted them here too. These are basically the same north-south and east-west lines. So, let's put the North Pole and Magnetic Pole back onto our screen. When one assumes that the compass points to true north, they are incorrect. The compass actually points to Magnetic North. 
a slightly different angle. This is called magnetic declination or variation and this angle is the angle of error that you will have in your navigation if you don't take that into account. Now where you are on the surface of the earth determines that angle whether it be one degree or five degrees or ten degrees and whether you need to adjust your compass to the left or to the right. Now let's come back down to earth and you will notice down here on this map that it has a little v-shaped symbol. Now this is not Tennessee and Minnesota this is true north and magnetic north. This is telling you that magnetic north is 7.9 degrees to the east or a plus positive declination. On the globe, I was showing you originally an east or negative or minus declination. Again, it depends on where on earth you are, what that angle actually is for your map. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our compass to that 7.9 degrees. And in order to do that, we're going to flip it over. I'm going to use a small screwdriver and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to adjust this little teeny screw. Different uh, compasses do it different. Most of them use a small screw. But now I have my declination set. And you will notice that even though the compass is still pointing the same direction, this little red mark in the back is aimed at a different, a different uh, angle. That is where we need to line up our map. Now you will notice that this and this are going the same direction. I have turned my map and correctly oriented it based on this information. Now Again, we will do the same thing. We will take our bearing, we'll set our bezel, we'll head cross country, and again, we will come across Wolf Creek. But before, I thought I was up here, when in reality, I'm down here, and here's why. I take a compass reading and I find 100 degrees. So when I take my compass and set it here, And bring my compass back to read 100 degrees, I'm actually down here. This is where I actually am because I've accounted for my magnetic declination. If I had thought I was up here, I would have headed downstream had I not taken this into consideration. So since I'm here and I didn't take it into consideration, I'm going to walk down here until I get to this point and realize, wait a minute, the ground's dropping off. I have a problem here. I've got to backtrack all the way up to here. Now, if you look at this scale, it's probably about eight or nine miles from here to here to here. To go from here to here and back is probably a couple extra miles. That's two miles I don't need to travel. If it's getting late in the day, it might be dark or close to dark before I even get to this campsite, if I can get to it at all. It may be that I can't get back up this creek bed to the campsite in time before night falls, and I have to spend the night at somewhere that's not ideal. So this is why it's important to understand this magnetic declination. By being able to set your compass correctly to that magnetic declination, I'm able to accurately determine that I'm actually here instead of not knowing about it and thinking I'm here and wasting this time coming all the way down here and then backtracking and finally getting to my campsite two or three hours later. Okay, there you have it. Magnetic declination or deviation or variation explained. And hopefully I've explained it to where you can understand it and understand it to where you know how to use it and apply it adjust your maps correctly, adjust your compass correctly, be able to orient your map correctly, and be able to navigate safely and securely and accurately in the wilderness. One other thing I want to point out is that 
the magnetic north that your compass points to is not always in the same place. It is constantly moving around. Right now, it's heading almost in a straight line. But in years past, it has gone all over the board. So it's very important to know that this nor magnetic north is moving. And the reason this is important is if you look at your map, it's probably going to have a publication date on it. So the older the map is, the more inaccurate the declination that's printed on the map could be. This one says 7.9. It may be 5.1 today. It may be 9.6 today. Who knows? To correct for this, there are websites you can go to. There are apps you can put on your phone. I'll put a link to the ones I use in the description below. Most of them, you can just click on a point on a map and it will tell you what the declination is today. Some maps allow you to put in a past or a future date, and if it's in the past, it will tell you what the declination was in the past. If it's in the future, like you're planning a trip in two years, it will estimate what the declination is calculated to be. It's not going to be perfectly accurate, but it's probably going to be accurate enough for our purposes. But just remember the farther out in time you go, the less accurate it's going to be. So the best thing to do is to click on your map as, as close to your time that you're going to be on your trip to get the most accurate information. So if you found this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share my videos. This is Backpack Hack. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out there on the trail, and hopefully you're not lost.